you know, we're, we're still pretty early in this, and I think we should be learning more about the candidates. That's that's what I think is sort of the the value of the theater of our um, election system. A lot of countries have a shorter election system. I think India, I mean, India's was super short, I and mean, it kind of happened in a flash. Um, England's is like six weeks. Um, in America, it takes a it takes a long time. But part of that is because America is a very big country, and these guys have to get to a lot of different people. And what I think the v- sort of positive aspect of the democratic debates right now is, uh, I mentioned this in a in in a video I did is every single person that I'm looking at, other than the corporate candidates. Um, between Tulsi and Bernie and Andrew Yang and Marianne Williamson, uh, Elizabeth Warren, you know, uh, even Julian Castro, um, Jay Inslee, everybody kind of has a very, very strong skill that I think uh, could go into one, one point of the cabinet. So for me, I'm going to use I'm going to use what I think would be the ideal ticket would would be Tulsi and Bernie, right? I think Tulsi would make a g- great president because I think she's got a lot of intelligence about how to deal with foreign affairs. Um, she would know how to uh, appropriately utilize the military budget because she has seen the theater of war, um, and she would know how to allocate that stuff to uh, domestic issues. And Bernie's really good with domestic issues. He's great with domestic issues, but I don't think his foreign policy is all that great, right? Uh, but Bernie's fucking great with domestic issues. So you keep him close to the Senate. You you make him put pressure on Mitch McConnell to not hold votes and hijack to not uh, to uh, sorry to 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 uh hold some legislation hijacked right to to just be like we're not going to vote on this like i think he can put pressure on this and actually get some work done um even in a republican congress because i think the pressure on the republican congress because bernie and tulsi both of them speak to conservatives that's why i think those two would be a, a very good team bernie might be a little bit a little bit more out there for conservatives but with tulsi leading the charge tulsi does speak to conservatives she does know how to talk to people in their uh, talk to conservatives in their own language and let them know that she's on their side that that some of these progressive values don't mean that they get left behind it means that they come along with us it means that their lives will get better along with the lives of all of these minority communities as well right i think andrew yang would serve very good as as someone um in charge of the secretary of labor right he kind of sees the automation thing coming how do you incorporate uh ubi and push forward the idea of meaningful work right and if you have some philosophies from marianne williamson kind of guiding that too you could you could put forward this idea um uh, and again i think andrew yang being that he is a a business person will once again be able to speak to the conservative side of things because the conservative side of, uh, likes to look at people in, in these business, uh, in, in the business world, in the private sector, and see that this is something that they can ascertain as well. So they kind of um, will, will, will go behind them in, in certain aspects. Uh, I think Marianne Williamson should be connected with the Department of Education um, and and in state this Department of Youth and Children um, really put forward some reforms in the education system through what we talked about uh, through through her her ideas of um, you know teaching religion as history having a mindfulness thing having some emotional education in there uh, putting forward critical thinking putting forward the ideas of real history fuck I mean if she comes out and is just like hey I think people's history of the United States should be taught in schools as as, as the history th- uh, uh, lesson I'd be all on board man I'd be I'd be jumping on the Marianne train you know I she, she'd be top three for me uh It'd be hard to beat Tulsi for me right now. It's, it's hard. It'd be hard to beat Tulsi for me right now, but she'd be up there, you know? Jay Inslee, you put him in charge of the EPA because he really talks a lot about uh, the, uh, the environment. He really wants to push forward um, having climate change be the forefront of the debate. And again, all, like everybody that I've just mentioned right now, um, they all have talked about the Green New Deal and how the Green New Deal... 
through the lens of sustainability can be applicable to every single one of their departments, right? To foreign affairs, to healthcare and domestic uh, relations, to uh, education, to uh, creating new jobs for people that would lose their job to automation and things of that sort. So uh, everybody kind of can work in, in, in tandem with each other. Uh, and I think if the Democratic Party is smart about that, they will start talking to each other about it. Um, what I think Julian Castro has some ideas about immigration. I do need to do a little bit more homework on Julian Castro, but uh, I, every, every, every one of these progressive candidates that are on there, everybody that's sort of not this mainstream corporate candidate, and I think Julian Castro is the closest thing to a corporate candidate that is on this list that I just mentioned, um, has something of value to offer and can uh, make the the next administration, if the Democrats want to win, then make this next administration something that actually gets uh, gets this country ready for some sort of a change. Because here's here's the thing: the if you if you get this entire progressive, like what I just mentioned with Tulsi, Bernie, uh, Andrew Yang, Jay Inslee, Marianne Williamson, all of them working in tandem with each other, right? Uh, at these various departments working with each other not kind of battling each other and they can get legislation passed through because i think within the within the the um within congress right now there are a variety of representatives and senators that are willing to work with the administration to push forward these ideas and to communicate to people that these ideas are good ideas that aren't going to leave them behind very important to do that um we will see a a transformational idea of democracy and leadership in America uh, that we probably haven't seen for a very long time, which is scary. Which is why, which is why I think, you know, twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty four will essentially be a campaign to try to get everything in preparation for something that was going to carry it forward for something that's going to mean that it's going to be true tr truly progressive and then from 2024 to 2028 and so on and so forth we can kind of guide that change forward we can start seeing some of the implementation of what are we going to do with automation how are we going to reform the education system how are we going to get out of some of these regime change wars that we've uh that that america has started how is america going to uh, make peace with the world and not be the global police? How are we going to implement a universal health care and figure out a budgetary application to pay for things like this and take take into consideration what it does to the healthcare industry itself, right? I'm not, I'm not talking about the pharmaceutical industry or the insurance companies, but uh, how do we take care of our doctors? How do we take care of uh, PCPs, healthcare professionals, things like that, and make sure that the people of America are not going into debt because they have um, they have a medical issue or something. All of these things can work in tandem. So I think within eight years, we might see that plan uh, being enacted if we see a truly transformational administration, uh, like the one that I just mentioned. That's that's another reason why I don't buy into this any blue will do kind of thing. You know, that's part of the reason why I don't buy into that sort of stuff. But uh, but yeah, that's what I think. Um, 